My name is Laura Jackson. I am a trapper, a humane trapper, and I trap feral dogs, have done some wildlife, and uh, dogs are not that much different than wildlife. Sometimes people fail to trap a dog because they don't know what they're going to do with it afterwards. I say take it a step at a time, trap your dog first, and then determine what to do afterwards. The purpose of a feeding station is to draw the animal into one spot, and as long as that dog has resources, it won't go away. What the feeding station do does is feed the dog until we remove the feeding station and place the trap where the feeding station was. Here's some of the homework that I do before I set up a feeding station and trap a dog. I prioritize the dog. If it's a female dog, I'd act upon it really quickly. The second thing I do is I go out and I watch for the dog. They'll follow certain pathways through roads, grassy areas, observe the dog, try to find out where she walks, where she sleeps. Obviously, when you set the feeding station up, she will get her food there, and then you're drawing her to you, training her to come to your location. Supplies you'll need for a feeding station are a cake pan, a nice heavy duty bucket, you'll need kibble, puppy food for preferably, you'll need stinky foods for the top, um, tuna fish and oil again, you'll need the water to create the moat. An important component of your feeding station is changing the food and the water daily. You want the food to be nice and fresh. Usually before I trap, I remove the feeding station one to two days, and that way I know she's hungry. I've also talked to all the neighbors and they've removed any outdoor pet food. A hungry dog is a trap dog. Make sure you keep water out for her. This is a fold-up collapsible trap. You can put it in cars, uh, in small spaces. Before I set up my trap, I inspect it to make sure it's oiled. It's clean. You get one chance sometimes, and so you want to make sure your equipment works right. This is your the front of the trap. You've got the O-rings on the side. To open the trap, pull the O-rings up. Pull the door. Open. You've got a little trap bar, or a little metal bar here. The little metal bar goes behind the bar. Once your door is up, you prop the bar at the back of the door, and there's different trigger strengths. So if you want a hair trigger, you put the bar just barely against this bar, and that props the door open. And it also uh, determines how heavy the trigger is. This, is. this is the rear of the trap. It's got some little spring hooks that close the trap at the back. Remove the back door to bait your trap. You remove the spring hooks. Push up, rotate out, push up on your spring, rotate the hook out, and now your trap door, the rear of your trap door is open. And it shows your trap plate. This bar is attached to the chain that's attached to the trap plate. So this is where you set your food in the back. Your trap plate, when the dog hits the trap plate, he springs the, the front door and the door comes closed. Your front door open, this just demonstrates how the trap works. This is your trap plate. The dog steps on the trap plate and the door comes down. So now your trap plate is up. When the dog comes in, he steps on the trap plate, the door goes down. Part of the homework is determining where to set your trap. You want to set your trap near a fence. Uh, if there's people around, you want to lock up your trap. I also set my traps in full-time shade. If that's not possible, then you want to cover the trap with plywood uh, to create shade. Inspect the trap. Make sure there's no loose parts. Make sure it sits level on the ground. Some of the good bait foods are barbecue, barbecue beef brisket, bacon, bacon soaked biscuits, hot dogs, Vienna sausages, tuna fish, sardines, uh, fried chicken without the bone. I lay a towel on the wire floor. That way when the dog 
enters, she doesn't feel the wire. And it also, the towel is a, is a good surface for your uh, wet food. Free food in the front. Not too much because we don't want the dog full before he goes into the trap. We lead the dog in. We've removed our hooks. And at the very back of the trap plate, using a paper uh, plate, never use a can of food. The dog will simply pick up the can and walk out. Usually I drop some bait behind here too. Um, so you've got a nice array of food. usually put a purpose note and it states who the trap belongs to, how to reach me, and the fact that it's a humane trap and we're trying to catch this dog so that we can get her to either to a shelter or to a safe place. As you're baiting your, your trap, you want to make sure you remove all trash, trash around it, trash on top of it. The day that you set your trap, you're going to need to ask all the neighbors to keep their pets indoors, otherwise you're going to trap neighbor dogs. So once your dog is caught, you can observe the behavior in the trap. Is he barking? Is he biting at the trap? Is he acting submissive? If he's biting at the trap and lunging against it, that's when you turn the trap up on its end so that he is now forced to sit down. You transport the trap, you don't want the trap coming loose or opening. So I take snap hooks and they just hook one of the doors so it would shut. Those are snap hooks, and they just hook the door so it couldn't come open. Once you've got your dog, there's some options. You can take the dog straight to a veterinary clinic. If you like the behavior in the trap, you go to a veterinary clinic. I usually have the vet take the dog out in a confined area, and if it's a dog that I'll foster, I'll have her spayed, a collar, a martingale collar, a non-slip collar, a harness, and two leashes attached to that dog while she's under being fixed. You can't underestimate how much these dogs want to get away from you when you first trap them. Um, some are truly feral. Some have just been out for so long that they're afraid of everybody, and they will socialize, but you need some help probably determining that. Don't be afraid to ask.